to Still Buffering, a sister's guide to teens through the ages. I am Riley Smurl. I'm Sydney McElroy. And I'm Taylor Smurl. Welcome to another week, sisters. <laughs> another fun, welcome, fun-filled family adventure. I ran out of... I just wanted there to be a, a like alliteration. I wanted there to be another F word I was, to follow that. I was trying. I couldn't. I couldn't. I ran out of F words. Um, Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't use the best one. <laughs> falafel. <laughs> Family fun filled falafel. <laughs> That's that's what they call our podcast. A family fun filled falafel of friendship. Of just, friendship and fads. Ooh. And fads. <laughs> Fads and fashion and family. This is for, a great <laughs> for for friends. Followers. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> writing an article about this for like their elementary school newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> this is how it would go. <laughs> yep. Well, uh, Riley, you took your ACT yesterday. I did. How'd it go? Uh, uh, I got to get up at like six in the morning on a Saturday, so not great. Well, I mean, how do you think this went? <laughs> but focus on what's really important. Um, I think the test went okay. I took it once in December. My mind was all on Christmas in December, so I think this time I was a little bit more focused. Okay, so you feel like you yeah, did good. well? Yeah. Okay. I mean, as well as you can do when you're taking a test that you know like decides your whole future, so mm-hmm. like you're really stressed about it. The te- hey man, no test decides your own future. You decide your own future, man. A test can't tell you what you're supposed to be. Only you can know that, man. <laughs> man. <laughs> Life doesn't have multiple choices. Oh, oh. Sydney. Well, no, actually, I mean, it does. It does. <laughs> It'd be bad if it Hold didn't. <laughs> Life, Life doesn't is- have Scantron sheets. Life isn't a true or false question. Hey, there it's you go. It's true and false. <laughs> I just hope life isn't one of those questions that says, is the answer A or A and B or A, B, C? Oh, man, those are the worst. Or it says, like, here every, are your all but D. one, two, and three. Mm. Which one of these is true? One, one and two, two and three, one and three, or one, two, and three. It's like, I, I hate all those. of them? Those should be illegal. Oh, That's like, I, I had one of those teachers in high school that would like to, like, Sometimes you take a test and it's all true or false, and they're all false. That's the worst. That yeah, they like the teachers would do that. Like every answer will be A, and it would drive them crazy. Like, what is that? What it, what happened to you that you feel the need to do that to children? That the, shouldn't be allowed. The worst is before you take a multiple choice test, and your teacher is like, "Oh, by the way, at one point in this test, there's five answers of the same letter in a row." So then you finish your test and go back, and you're like, "I don't, I don't have five answers. There are a few where there could be five answers. Where, where are there five answers?" <laughs> That's a crazy <laughs> riddle to give you when you're doing a right? test. Like, this has nothing to do with the information. <laughs> if you've answered all the questions correctly, your bubbles should form a parrot. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the one kid who wasn't trying to do the test. He was just making a parrot out uh-huh. of his answers who's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I knew the skill would pay off. <laughs> Of all the things to choose to make out of bubbles on a scantron sheet, you know that kid would pick a parent. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's also a huge Jimmy Buffett fan. Right. That's why he that made was like it. some some secret test by a shady government organization to find the most like individual free thinker to recruit <laughs> to be a spy. That's what happened. <laughs> this this is the beginning of a Disney movie, right? Yes. Like, there, there's some movie, like Disney Channel original movie. Spy Kids Five. Oh. Spy Kids Five. Like whoa, whoa, whoa! What are you doing? I'm, I'm not even scantron. good at tests. <laughs> they give you a, they give you one of those bubble sheets, but don't give you a question sheet. It's like figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> that, that also sounds like the beginning of a horror film. Or like yeah, a that's my horror movie. film. Like, and everybody who answers wrong gets killed. I was just thinking, like taking a test and failing. <laughs> uh, or get killed. It's no longer it's no longer a Disney movie. Sid. <laughs> you, you just on Disney. I'm used to, I'm used to exams medical school style where it really feels that way. Someone literally dies. Well, no. <laughs> I mean, like, no, not, I mean, not on the exams. <laughs> in real life. <laughs> just, just in real life. Um, But we're, we're not here to talk about tests. We're yeah, that's nothing, that. that's nothing we're talking about. <laughs> I just really wondered how your test went and I thought you'd want to share it with 
all of our listeners. With everyone. <laughs> I was hoping well. I was banking on that. I, do you want me to be honest I mean, and say I think I got like a 12 on the math portion? Hi, everybody. I don't think that's true. Don't, I don't know what that even means. Your neighborhood like, teen got a 12. Just kidding. You know what? A 12. I can't a 12 remember my great. scores. It's meaningless to probably most people listening. Don't worry about it. <laughs> do your best. Your best is the best for you. Thank you, Daniel Tiger. You're welcome. <laughs> That's all that matters, Riley. Uh, no, but we're not going to talk about that this week. What are we talking about? We're talking about Alterna. Because I really don't Alterna know. Alterna kids. Alterna. Alterna kits? Alterna kit. No. Alterna kids. Alterna kit. <laughs> Our new band. The new band. The Alterna kits. <laughs> Seriously, though, tourniquets are a big deal, and you just shouldn't use them if you if you don't know how. Alterna well, you kits. Should write, you put a big T on the forehead. When you put a tourniquet on somebody, and then you also you only do it if it's a lo- it's a risk of losing life, and if the limb's probably gonna get get bite anyway, right? Hey, somebody <laughs> was listening in my class that I taught. What situation? Remember, do you think you're in that you have a utensil that you can write on someone's forehead and it will stay, but lipstick? Not that you have mm-hmm. like a doctor. That's why it's a good idea to have a sharpie in your emergency kit. Or lipstick. Or lipstick. <laughs> you get you get a good no fade. You get a lime crumb on that forehead. A <laughs> liquid to matte. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> liquid matte lipstick. Great for marking tourniquets and looking cute. <laughs> <laughs> I'll care. Hey, quick, TM that. They're going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> Send me stuff. I like your products. <laughs> Please. No, I, I feel like there, there have always been like, certain kind of fashions and trends and fads associated uh with the the teens who are out of the mainstream mm-hmm. who or who consider themselves i should yeah. say out of the mainstream right. and some of it is like derived from music i think i think you could draw a lot of close links to music with this kind of fashion but it's definitely something that while the concept has not changed, probably the way that it looks, the way that people dress and the way they act and the kind of the attitudes associated with it have changed somewhat. Mm-hmm. Is that right. fair to say? I think that's very fair to say. Like, I think I think if you go back be, before Taylor and I, like what we're kind of talking about would be for our parents, like the hippie generation. Mm-hmm. Like hippies right. were the original alternate kids, right? Right. Alternate kids. Like forget the mainstream man. We're about peace and love and well, the, not. But then you have like greasers in the fifties. Is that are they that the they, same the, thing? The, are they the origin of the of the alternative kid? So it was the greasers and then the hippies. What was going on in the twenties? Who was who was wearing leather jackets in the twenties? The flappers. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Oh, we can go back farther. You're right. Flappers were the alternate kids. And the, and the hep cats. Isn't that what you call the guys with the chains and the zoot suits? Yeah, yeah. The barbaloot suits. Um, no, no, Pops was in the 70s. Not barbaloot suits. <laughs> it's different. That's, that could be your alternate culture. There was punk in there. Yeah, no, you're right. In the 70s. Seven, yeah. And then, and then, I guess, like, in the 80s, like... We get it. Is this when grunge enters? Well, Later I in the eighties. Grunge is nineties. Late eighties, early nineties. I mean, you early have new 90s. wave in the eighties. Yeah, mm-hmm. new that wave. Was, that was alternative. But but the first thing, my first recollection of like what I considered the the kids who were alternative was probably grunge. Mm-hmm. Meaning, yeah. you. I mean, uh, largely, I would say linked to like Nirvana. Yeah. I mean, that was that was kind of my touchstone, my like musical touchstone for that. And it was like the kids who wore flannel and like ripped jeans Mm -hmm. and generally weren't like put together. Mm -hmm. Long hair. Yeah. Not not washed. Exactly. Intentionally messy. A very intentionally messy look. Yeah. Grungy. You know, like you might have like your like shoelaces wouldn't match <laughs> wow <laughs> but I, you know so you don't care about the way you look because mm-hmm. you're into deeper things was right. kind of the attitude you know i because i i was a little bit i mean i was a little bit more skewed towards punk and like i guess nerd rock which was also big and like the that was, that was 90s early 2000s that was kind of a 
an on trend thing for I think the underground kids. Mm-hmm. But I think something that I don't know, maybe maybe it's still a thing. But man, you never wanted to wear shoes that looked like you just bought them. No, like, never. Doc Martens and Chuck Taylors were kind of the popular go tos. And I remember our cousin like beating his new Chuck Taylors in the dirt out back of his house to make them look worn in. Mm-hmm. Like you, you wanted to get your Doc Martens to the point where you'd have to duct tape the toe back together or something like that. Yep. And you got to have duct tape on your shoe, which made you super cool. Yeah. Like you never wanted your shoes to look new. No, See, you- you're absolutely right. The the older and dirtier your shoes could look. I mean, that that I used to do the same thing. I used to br- get new shoes and then just run around outside in them to get them all dirty and muddy and, sc- and like try to intentionally scuff them mm-hmm. so that they looked like oh, I've had these. I've had them forever. Whatever. I don't even care. That's so yeah. interesting because now like across I'm going to say across all sort of teen culture. There's a sort of common theme that you want your shoes to look like you just bought them. Like you want them to look like you've owned them for two seconds and they're just out of the box. Really? Yeah. Really? Like, Dude. like, super, <laughs> like, I'm not even kidding. Just like you buy these really nice tennis shoes and you want them to just not get scuffed or dirty or anything. You want them to look nice and new. So you don't want anyone to touch them. I have all these friends that have all white Converse and they buy new ones if they start getting too dirty. Do you do you polish your shoes? I mean, I, when I get like dirt on my shoes, I'll wipe it off. But I mean, like, like I have a white pair of tennis shoes. If I get like mud on them, I'll wipe them off. There was a time when it was fa- when like it was appropriate to polish your shoes periodically, like well, to have them cleaned and polished. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not being like I don't not, go I'm to like a shoe shine and say well, here. I wonder, like, you shine your shoes. Like, are we returning to shine shoe shine days? I, is this a viable business for for teens in the in the current generation? What I'm proposing. Can you imagine Riley the kid is... in the hallway who pops up a little shoe shine stand and says, "Shoe shines, just be cool." That'd be like retro and kind of vintagey, and it would also clearly be of great use for the teens of today. Polish everybody's yeah. what Adidas. Yeah, is that right? Have, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Have you considered starting a shoe shine business in your high school, Riley? I think I'd make bank. I haven't I think thought you would. about it. <laughs> Now, now you can. I I think it's fair to say though that that trend towards a like a cleaner look, uh, like a f- like out of the mainstream alternative, but it was kind of not necessarily as dirty and grungy and careless as you wanted it to look, mm-hmm. was already starting to happen when I was younger because there was the grunge thing, which was seriously supposed to be like you're dirty and your clothes aren't. Or your clothes are wrinkled and dirty and old and might have holes in them. And that's legit. Like mm-hmm. you, you weren't supposed to go buy jeans that had holes in them. You were supposed yeah. to have jeans that were so old that they had holes worn in them. Right. Um, like I remember wanting to, as quickly as I could, I would buy jeans that were too long so that I could walk on the heels so that I could shred <sighs> the, the back of the cuffs of my jeans. So they would like hang in strings of denim and be shredded mm-hmm. and dirty and muddy. And like that, I was like, that was intentional. I wanted them to look that way. That's crazy. Yeah. Like the backs and like, I didn't want to wash them too much because they look dirty and right. they're supposed to, cause it's grungy and it was cool. Yeah. Uh, but that was, that was already fading. That was like, that was early nineties. But mm-hmm. as yeah. I was coming of age, it was and Taylor. I'd say you would probably agree. We were getting into like the, you mentioned punk. I would say this was like the faux, like pop punk derivative of punk. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I think that's that's where like my style veered because I was gonna I would never like I hated those big jeans. I used to make fun of them relentlessly, like I would have done my, that too. <laughs> yeah. Like it was very much them, like you'd wear I like the them. <laughs> yeah, we, we we brought like it was the advent of the skinny jean, like the dark colored skinny jean, mm-hmm. probably cuffed. A cuff was was cool, like a, a tight fitting band t shirt, and you could wear colors, they could be brighter colors like a white belt or maybe like a like a white and black like checkered belt <laughs> with with like Chuck Taylors. Like that was like a that was, you know, then you were a little punk kid and you're a little pop punk kid and you go listen to your, you know, whatever, your Green Day and be cool. Which is funny cuz that was even that again like you said that was even a step towards a cleaner look from where I was cuz I mean for my alternative days it was very clearly the big giant jeans, of course. And we've talked about this: big giant jeans and the little baby doll T-shirts, mm-hmm. um, with something like funny 
or ironic Mm -hmm. or clever on them, or maybe just a cartoon character if you had nothing else to come up with, Mm -hmm. you know. Uh, And vans were super popular. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I had vans. Um, I remember. Yeah, I had Skechers. (laughs) Did you have Skechers? Yeah. I had Skechers. But but I had vans. I had multiple pairs of vans in different colors because they were cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, by the way, it should be noted, I have never set foot on a skateboard. (laughs) No, but you did dress like a skater. Yeah. But not once in my life have I ever, I mean, maybe like stood on one for fun once. I've never actually stood on one skate. I've never skateboarded, skater, skatered, skatered, skated, skated board. I have never skated the boards. You know, (laughs) they say. I, uh, so, something about small genetics, very weak ankles. Anything that involves like <laughs> yeah. wheels on the feet, it's a terrible idea. Skating, ice skating, skiing, oh, yeah. skateboarding, all oh, of it. It's, it's true. Bad. Chicken ankles. Yes. Yeah, the whole family. It's true. I, I, and no balance. A bunch of, yeah. A bunch of my buddies are like derby girls and I wanted so bad to be one of those awesome derby girls. Like my friend gave me skates and everything, and I I spent like every morning for a week just trying to be able to move in them. And I'm like, nope, absolutely not. Yeah, <laughs> will never be me. I will never be this. I'm with you. I was one of those kids that intentionally skipped the days where you get a reward for reading so much and you get to go to the the skate skating <laughs> rink. I yep. just skipped school because I didn't want to have to skate. <laughs> oh man, I used to do the same thing. We would do that for mm-hmm. ice skating and roller skating. Mm-hmm. And I was like, forget that. <laughs> yeah. How are Justin's ankles? We we all need to to mix up our genetics with people with sturdy ankles. Justin, <laughs> we will never Charlie escape. can't suffer from this. Justin's <laughs> ankles, I believe, are sturdy. But I will say this: he does not skate either. Uh, oh, no. He and he, I oh, asked no. him once, like, I can't skate at all. I have no balance. Can you know? Can you skate? And he said, No, I can't because I don't like to fall. <laughs> so i refuse to try because i don't want to fall it well seems, charlie is it, destined to a it life it seems of like hurt. that would hurt oh man i i want that on like a motivational poster with like a rainbow behind <laughs> <laughs> don't try to skate you might fall and it seems like that would hurt justin mcelroy um that we also used to wear i have to mention this with this outfit riley so you get the complete picture uh-huh. there used to be these little knit like beanie cap things mm-hmm. we used to wear. Mm-hmm. They weren't like a full beanie. It was just like the top, I don't know, half of a beanie. It was a very small, it, like this. Like it wouldn't come down like every a, I'm imagining a, a yarmulke. <laughs> it, was, it was a fashion yarmulke. It was, <laughs> it was sort of like bigger. Yeah. But, but, but like, yeah. <laughs> but that's what we used to, and I like, I remember I had a rainbow colored one and I would yeah, wear that and I was like, did. This is the coolest thing I've ever done. <laughs> I, yeah, you would wear that and ear cuffs. I remember uh-huh. thinking that your ear cuffs were so cool. Like, you wear a little beanie hat and then, like, a, a fairy ear cuff. <laughs> and if you wanted to take it to the super cool level that I didn't I didn't do often because I didn't think I could pull it off, it would be the arm, like, sweatbands. Oh, yeah. The, like, multicolored, <laughs> rainbow-colored sweatbands on your uh-huh. arms, like, just at mm-hmm. your wrists. Uh-huh. That was very cool i actually also had head sweat bands that's like moving forward more into like i don't know sporty spice (laughs) i I did i did at one point dress like sporty spice right i did fully try to pull off like for a costume or like just for a daily we were going out clubbing and i thought clubbing uh i thought sport i was in high school and there there were one of the local clubs had a teen night and i was like you know who's cool is sporty spice i'll wear these (laughs) i'll wear these red track pants (laughs) <laughs> and this little white tank top and uh in my i think i wear like sambas <laughs> i was like this will be cool oh. no wow no yeah i didn't try the sporty spy no. <laughs> very much i mean that sounds pretty innocuous you know it's not like it's not like going full, full ginger spies and wearing platforms and stuff and a bustier that would probably be yeah. that probably have looked better mm, yeah i'd say it's more like a like an outfit <laughs> and not like a character <laughs> but you're right you're right tay that the the giant pants and baby tees did fade into like the skinny jeans because the the skinny yeah. jeans were like that was the that was when i was in college that was what everybody who was yeah i mean if you were listening to weezer you were cool i was good it's funny how these certain bands just become iconic representations mm-hmm. of like the fashion that you know there was so much that like kind of 
I don't know, nerd rock, emo when it was good, like that kind of time period, I guess, is when we're talking about. But it's like, it just gets reduced down to Buddy Holly. <laughs> it does. It's like, like the, the song, the video. It is. It's it's Weezer. I, I, that's very much how I associate it. And I, that's when I was like, no, the jeans went from super large to super small. That's what <laughs> the I'm thinking tighter, of. The better. <laughs> is when I was in like, like preteen, when I was a tween, I always wore like not bell bottoms, but like bootleg jeans, like a mm-hmm. smaller version of a bell bottom jean. Yep. But now, like ever since I've been in uh, sixth grade, probably it skinny jeans have been like the one popular form of jeans. Mm-hmm. Like even up until now, that has not changed. Like mostly ripped skinny jeans. Like you buy the ripped jeans. I'm like the only one in my entire group of friends that doesn't have a pair of ripped jeans just because I'm like, why would you want to rip your jeans? It's, it's <laughs> But uh, <laughs> my jeans in one piece, please. Right, like this is <laughs> what, they're just a hole. Like you just want to get rid of that, maybe. Like have whole jeans, um. But like ripped skinny jeans, black ripped skinny jeans is really like the the most popular form of of pant for the alternative <laughs> alternative kid. Now I'd say mm, that's really interesting. I I feel like the skinny jean thing hit like what you'd think of as kind of generically speaking male fashion first. Mm -hmm. Like I remember like still wearing the kind of the boot cut jeans uh, with my Chuck Taylors because I had gotten that far. Mm -hmm. I had my Chucks on. I had my cool band tees. uh, But then I was still wearing boot cut jeans while the guys that I was hanging out with and going to see their shows and stuff were already into the skinny jeans. Yeah. Like it, I don't know if that's true, but if that was just me being behind, because that very much could have been it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I feel like it hit male fashion first. Do you think? Well, I, I feel like it was a more noticeable thing for men because I think that style Maybe that's of, it. Yeah. Yeah. It was just such a, it was weirder for, I don't know. This is, you know, weird, outdated. It was weird for a man to wear tight pants, but it was to be so popular. And I mean, that's also like kind of the advent of like scene kids. I don't know that that all took off in a weird direction. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Which no, that's true. Like I remember and Riley, I'm, I'm curious because I see it all over like the Instagrams now. <laughs> the like, gram. I remember putting like some very very small purple and orange stripes in my hair my senior year Mm -hmm. and i was like a rebel (laughs) and they were like so innocuous but like it colored hair now i feel like is all it's like super on trend and like mainstream even yeah yeah getting colored hair a lot of my friends have both had colored hair like fully colored not just like stripes like fully colored or have very deeply considered getting colored hair, but their parents wouldn't let them <laughs> like mm. wanting to get that pastel look like a, like if you have blonde hair, like almost like you can't really tell if it's colored until you get up close and you realize it's like light purple and light blue or like these bright and insane, like rainbow ombre hairstyles. Like those are all very, yeah. very popular. There aren't a lot personally, like at my school, just because we live somewhere smaller and not as like with the, with the times, not as cosmopolitan, right? Not as trendy, but, uh, yeah, I I mean, I see a ton of people getting their hair colored. I want to talk more about colored hair, but before we do that, let's check the group message. We have a sponsor this week, don't we? Woohoo, we do. Tell us about it. Riley? I will. Go. Uh, (laughs) Our sponsor this week is someone you've heard from us about before, and that is HelloFresh. Uh, the meal kit delivery service dedicated to making cooking fun, easy, and convenient. And we can tell you it's all of those things. Yeah, we've all tried yeah. HelloFresh and uh, and had wonderful experiences with it. Taylor, you enjoyed your HelloFresh experience? Uh, absolutely. They were incredibly easy to make. Um, they were like, the flavors were awesome. Like, it's very much like, for me, I did the vegetarian menu, and it was just so much like beautiful, fresh produce and like, really bright like flavors that I maybe would have been intimidated to try on my own but with the comfort of like a little like don't don't worry there's a packet you can just put it in there it's all gonna be okay like I I I trusted them and I was rewarded with delicious food and you can make all kinds of wonderful things like upcoming uh recipes for the next couple weeks or things like the juicy lucy burger Mm. or toasted rice and shrimp bowl as uh, Taylor mentioned they also have like a 
vegetarian menu if you want to make the ultimate spring salad or chickpea powered Mediterranean couscous. So Ooh. all kinds of delicious meals coming up. Yeah. Uh, each week, HelloFresh creates new delicious recipes uh, like Sydney was talking about, and they all come with step-by-step instructions and all take like 30 minutes, which is basically no time. And a lot of things to cook take a lot longer. Uh, and they are for everyone from novices to seasoned home cooks, all for less than $10 a meal, which is crazy. And they're all delivered to your doorstep in a special insulated box for free. Yeah. Uh, so you can get $30 off your first week of deliveries uh, if you visit HelloFresh. <laughs> I went, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? I know, it's amazing. <laughs> Let's all pause. Uh, yeah, so $30 off your first week of deliveries uh, if you go to HelloFresh.com and enter a promo code still buffering 30 uh that'll get you $30 off your first order uh which is already crazy cheap to begin with and this is a great deal yeah so go visit hellofresh.com and enter promo code still buffering 30 that's 30 do it eat some vegetables <laughs> <laughs> so coloring your hair so it's very on trend now which mm-hmm. is interesting cuz i don't feel like it was at all like taylor i remember when you came back from your summer at art at (laughs) art school art camp art (sighs) governor school for the arts and you had pink hair i know and it was such a shock for mom and dad because it it really wasn't like there would there would be like the kids who maybe like would use kool-aid to dye their hair Mm -hmm. or have like one streak of something and it was like oh my gosh they have a streak of blue in their hair did you see that that's crazy (laughs) but it was not i mean when you when you talk about coloring your hair it was like getting blonde highlights yeah <laughs> that's, that's now that it's that that was such a funny like a, adorable alternative love moment memory for me like i went away to this art school program at scads vanna college of art design and like you know on a crazy night there was this boy that I was friends with and I dyed my hair pink and he dyed his hair blue and like we <laughs> cemented our weirdness together <laughs> that was so funny you did you came home from art school with pink hair it was very much like oh, my sister came home with from art school and now she's got pink hair yeah. <laughs> you know well, then before school art started school. i was like well, i can't go to school like this i have to make it more subdued you have to get the the acceptable alternative hair coloring which was like really chunky highlights mm. <laughs> like i got big yeah. chunks of blonde and brown as opposed to the subtle mm-hmm. um and then that was like the same era where guys were like frosting their tips oh, as yeah. justin did <laughs> justin had frosted tips oh, god so much I abuse of bleach pictures. um but that that stuff was still very fringe like do you remember sid it was like on the news about a girl getting sent home from school for wearing black lipstick yeah like That's this was crazy. this was still happening in our time period like which is true and that that's a that's a kind of we talk we talk about alternative like the which i i dress this way because i felt like the cool kids the mainstream kids that i wasn't a part of were dressing in i guess a derivative of what you think of as preppy clothes Mm -hmm. you know they were very put together uh everything everything was like the hair and the makeup and the outfit and all matched and everything looked really nice. And the, everybody was like buttoned in or buttoned down and and tucked in. And I don't know, everybody looked very cool and put together. And these were styles that were like, I don't have time for that. Mm -hmm. Well, and the popular stuff too was very branded. Like it was very much about wearing stuff that said names that cost money. Exactly. You know, and I think that we specifically like, It was less about fashion and more about kind of sending a clear counterpoint of like, we don't care if we show off money. Like we're, we go get clothes at the Goodwill because we don't care about a $50, you know, Hollister top or whatever. No, I have this red shirt that I bought at Goodwill that says Rodan on it in yellow letters. (laughs) I don't know what it means. And it's got a hole right over the nipple, but I'm wearing it anyway. (laughs) I, I have had this blue shirt that's like a camp counselor shirt since high school and it is my favorite t shirt. I don't it's like camp counselor somewhere in like New Jersey. It's like it's just yeah. The most perfect. Yeah. I I, re- I had my collection of Goodwill shirts that I was like, yeah, whatever, it's got a hole in it, I don't care. Um that's really <laughs> interesting that you say that was like the alternative because I'd say now you're not you wouldn't be considered alternative, but you'd be out of the 
out of the most popular fashion sense if you were wearing the brand name things like the clothes from Hollister or Apostle or something like that because that's like that you're you look like you're trying too hard I guess you look like you're really mm -hmm. and huh. the most popular thing are the people who this is going to sound confusing as I'm saying it I'm realizing that they perceive themselves to be out of the mainstream and unique but really there are so many people doing what they're doing that's the mainstream thing to be doing huh. so like they're seeing what? themselves as they're seeing themselves as hipsters who who no one else is dressing this way and no one else is like thrifting their clothes and buying things from goodwill and like putting together crazy outfits that you'd never think work or like wearing your grandparents old clothes but no one else is doing that but really that's what everyone's doing because that's become the popular way to dress that's really interesting because what it makes sense because Riley, you probably are already aware of this, but I'm going to say it anyway, and maybe some other teens will be shocked to hear it, but there are people out there whose job it is to figure out what you like and then sell it to you. Right. <laughs> and, and it makes a lot of sense if you think that you look at these generations of teenagers who are trying to see what the, what the popular thing is and mm -hmm. rebel against it, because ultimately what you want is to be considered an individual is mm -hmm. to be considered like a, a free thinker, you know, right. your own person. And so if you can somehow tie a look, a clothing to that feeling to, to inherently being mm -hmm. a free thinker, a free spirit, or like your own person, independent, not, not a sheep, right. Then everybody's going to want to dress like that. Yeah. Even though it is now the thing that everybody's doing, like that's a really, yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sure that it's been intentionally branded that way. I mean, if I'm thinking about like, an outfit there are, I will say there are some people who I would say are alternative in the sense that they're dressing in a way that isn't the brand name stuff but it's also much more out of out of the realm of what everyone is wearing it's mm -hmm. much more like bizarre I guess in a sense like it is alternative like the alternative people are wearing things like they're thrifting and they're wearing things that you wouldn't think to wear, but they're doing it in the extreme sense. Like they're putting together outfits with like all these different patterns and like all these crazy colors. And you're like, how does that even work? But somehow it works, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like all these people who are just putting together whatever kind of to make it look like they don't care. Like they just threw something on, but also it all works as an outfit. Yeah. Um, but if I'm thinking of like the typical like teen alternative, but also in the mainstream fashion would be like ripped skinny jeans probably either black or very light washed and some sort of tight shirt that has like like a like a netting in the front and a v almost uh -huh. if that makes sense like crossing across the front and a yeah. v so it looks like a v-neck but you have fabric there chokers um all their makeup like done like create not crazy makeup but like the makeup you see on like instagram and pinterest mm -hmm. and stuff like a lot mm -hmm. of people doing that even in high school and either adidas or vans or chucks or doc martens and wow and chokers mm -hmm. yes definitely really mm -hmm. i mean chokers were very cool when i was i mean this was a long time ago right that that's what that yeah when you 90s, all were describing like 90s yeah grunge fashion with fit flannels tied around your waist and doc martens mm -hmm. and ripped jeans like that's honestly the style like, I see so many people on a regular basis wearing, like, overalls that are jeans, but they're ripped on the pants, and they're mm -hmm. wearing a flannel over them, and, like, one of the sleeves on the overalls is undone and, like, intentionally torn off, so, like, you can only button one of the sleeves with yeah. Doc Martens or, like, beat-up Chuck Taylors. Like, that's, like, the popular but alternative fashion. But it's being sold in, like, popular clothing stores. Yeah. Like, it's an alternative look that is being... It's being marketed as alternative to the mainstream. Right. And when I think about, like, it goes along with the music because you see all these girls, like, going to music festivals on Instagram that you want to dress like, and you're they're seeing all these bands, and they're the bands that are constantly going on tour. And I have so many friends that are always going to concerts, like, they're not necessarily bands I listen to, but the popular bands are, like, the 1975, the Neighborhood, Halsey, things like that that are alternative indie music that you think is like oh i listen to these bands that's so cool like i have their vinyls and i listen to them on my record player <laughs> and i go to their concerts wearing like tight crop tops and ripped skinny jeans and flannels like that's the popular thing to be doing but you also think you're being alternative 
in a sense. Well, that that's really that's interesting. interesting. Yeah, because I one thing I've I've noticed, and I like like I've noticed it in like shops that are catering towards younger kids for sure. Like Forever Twenty One, like there was a window I walked by, and it was like three mannequins and one was wearing like a Ramon shirt and then there was like a Leonard Skinner shirt and a David Bowie shirt. And I was yeah. like, this doesn't make sense. What? And <laughs> the thing is, like kids are going to walk around in these shirts. And I don't know for me. And once again, this was because I, that weird sort of nerdy punk scene that I came up and it's like, if you were going to wear a band shirt, you better be ready to answer any question about that band that someone might ask. Oh you. yeah. Like wearing a band shirt was like, a statement and a challenge all at once. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, and I, I see kids just walking around in like these perfectly like, you know, like new Ramon shirt. Like, and it's like not to, I, I hate to be that old lady that's like, do you even listen to music though? Do you? <laughs> but it's like, it's interesting that that kind of stuff is been embraced and kind of put back out there as part and parcel with this image because it's so like, that stuff was never sold in those stores when we were kids. No, when we that's, were teens. That's so true. I, I remember my one of my old boyfriends back in the day got me a Ramones t shirt to wear because he was a big Ramones fan and he wore Ramones shirts a lot. And I was so afraid to wear it because I had heard some of the music, but I didn't know the band. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I can't wear that. I'm going to be such a poser if i wear this shirt <laughs> yeah <laughs> because well, somebody's I, gonna ask me something about the ramones and i'm not gonna know the answer and what am i gonna say like oh, i don't know my boyfriend got it for me like that sounds terrible and it was hard because i liked it it was cool and i wish yeah. i was cool enough to wear it but i wasn't well I, I remember getting like a green day shirt for christmas and i didn't wear it for a year because i felt like i had to do my homework first yeah i had to be a committed green day fan for a really long time and then i could wear my cool green day shirt to school because i didn't want one of the cool punk kids to be like really though what's your favorite album i'd be like "Ah." that's that's exactly why i went to i went to a foo fighters show once and i didn't get a t-shirt because i liked foo fighters i went to their show i had one of their cds but i didn't i didn't know the foo fighters Mm -hmm. and i thought I can't I can't say like, well, I went to a concert once and Dave Grohl's the most amazing drummer I've ever seen. That's all I got. I'm out. Like those are obvious answers. And so I'd never owned a Foo Fighter shirt because I was afraid of being asked too many questions. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely very popular to wear like the old band t shirts. Like you were saying, like I know Forever Twenty One has A C D C and and yeah. David Bowie and um Jimi hendrix like all of these super i'm Just not anything old literally anything <laughs> old that's not making music right now or a band shirt from a band that you saw in concert yeah like but it doesn't matter if you know about them because you saw them in concert and that's enough? and that's why you're wearing it because you saw them so riley i have to ask the concept of a poser because that was such a big thing like yeah. i felt like in like like in the scenes that we were both part of, like, is that not there anymore? I think it is, but with, I feel like now clothing has become so sort of diverse. Like everyone's wearing something different and there are so many new weird things, not weird, but just like different styles that are out and available that people want to try. It's almost like it's hard to define yourself by one stereotype because everything's constantly changing so your fashion is constantly changing and what you're buying is constantly changing so it's hard to define yourself as something and then see someone who also does that but say they're a poser because they could be wearing something in this sort of genre one week and then the next week they're wearing something completely different really so everyone's so different it's not like there are certain groups necessarily like you can definitely tell the people who listen to this kind of music and wear this kind of clothing and the popular people who are listening to like the most mainstream kinds of music that have been either been around for a long time or like the most popular things to be listening to. And they're the ones who go to school like wearing leggings and sweatshirts like they look like they don't care to be there. And mm-hmm. that's what makes them cool. It's like they don't care enough to dress up for school or like wear anything cool. And those are the kind of popular kids that I think would call other people posers, but also wouldn't really know what to look for because they don't listen to anything else or look at anything yeah. else if that makes sense that's huh. interesting that's because it just seemed it just was so tied to the music for us it's yeah. like the fashion was something that was a byproduct but like that was the like you know it was like you would have like 
fashion goths and fashion punks and then real goths and real punks. Mm -hmm. And to be a fashion punk is an insult. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like now it's like, you know, being able to pull off a well-executed look that's an homage to like 1970s New York punk is a cool thing. Yeah. Which I actually would agree with. I 100%. I love the I love the look and I would never care if somebody has listened to any of those bands. It's just it makes me happy to see a 17-year-old kid wearing, you know, like a dead boy shirt. It's like, ah, that's amazing. You don't yeah. care if you know who they are. Yeah, you know, definitely. That, that's funny because I think it's still in me that um, if you don't, like, I don't think I to this day would wear a shirt with a band on it that I didn't know, mm -hmm. that I didn't know and love and could back up with like, if you quiz me, I can answer questions about who's in the <laughs> band, about the progression of their albums. I will argue with you about why this one's better than this one. And I know that this argument exists mm -hmm. <laughs> ahead of time. And I mean, like, I still, I think that's too ingrained in me that like, you can't do that because, yeah. you know, people will call you out. Right. Um, which is why I try to be safe and just wear Jimmy Buffett t-shirts. Right. Because you, know? you can say anything about Jimmy Buffett. Because I guess no one is going to test your Buffett cred. <laughs> Nobody's going to be like, are you really cool enough to wear a Jimmy Buffett shirt? <laughs> no, I, I, they are definitely assuming it is an ironic gesture. Wait. <laughs> That was the other thing about fashion. It was ironic for us. For uh, this was more of a college thing. Yeah. But, you know, like you just you were supposed to look dumb to be like I just I wore whatever. Look like, how stupid I look. <laughs> Who cares? Well, that's <laughs> now what I have been cool by my senior year of high school. I didn't care about like the. I mean, I cared about my grades mm -hmm. and I cared what my teachers thought of me. Right. But I had moved far past caring what anybody else thought of me. Not because I was that cool, but because. I think I'd, I'd given up. Right. <laughs> it was hopeless. It was, I mean, they knew who I was. Like I, we, grew, we lived here most of our lives. Mm -hmm. People knew who I was by then. I, I couldn't fake it. So I, I did get to the point where I didn't care. I didn't really wear a lot of makeup. I didn't do my hair because I wanted to get up five minutes before I had to go to school every day. And I wore things like Jimmy Buffett t-shirts <laughs> and like jeans. And yeah. that was the end of it. Yeah. it. Is that would I be cool now? I mean, I think definitely the whole look of looking like you don't care to be where you are is cool. Like in the sense that either you're wearing like messy hair, like a grunge look, like messy hair and a flannel and t-shirt and jeans, or you're wearing a sweatshirt and leggings and your hair's up in a bun. You're not wearing makeup. Like both of those looks of not looking like you care where you are, are what the popular kids at my school honestly wear. It's just mm -hmm. like they don't care enough. They don't look like they're trying too hard. Because, of course, you don't want to look like you're trying too hard. That's, like, the worst thing you could look like when you're a teenager in high school. See, I think that's I think that's a big shift because, uh, and Taylor, I think you already said this, it really was the, the cool thing. And, I mean, if you look back at a movie like Clueless, mm -hmm. the cool thing is to try hard. Right. Is to be put together. Right. Every, yeah. You know, head to toe, everything goes, it matches, it was, it was conceived of ahead of time. I mean, like, that was yeah. cool. I think modern fashion almost for girls at least and for my group of friends is like one day you could be wearing sweatshirts and leggings and not care what you look like and have your hair up or whatever. And the next day you have your outfit put together and like your hair is done and your makeup is done and your shoes match with your jacket and your t-shirt and your pants or your dress or whatever. Like everything goes, mm -hmm. but there's no in between. It's either like you don't care at all. Or you did so much to make this outfit look good and everything is put together perfectly. You know, that that's really, I, I think the thing that, I, that I'm kind of stuck on, it's like that, that idea that you can just kind of pick and choose what you're going to look like. It'll all be like a, you know, like it's all okay. And you can pick from different styles and different decades. Like, mm -hmm. because the other thing, like, you know, like Sydney was describing, like the cool kids looked a certain way. And then I think the reason that the, the leftovers, we chose to differentiate ourselves was to find your tribe like mm -hmm. if i show up to work or to, to work if i show up to school wearing my like you know my my band t-shirt and my my jeans and my shoes the other kids that dress like me will know that i'm one of them and i'll find my group same if i show up in you know like my you know i don't know like my platform black boots and my Marilyn manson shirt i'm gonna find the kids that like the things i like like the fashion was so much more about finding people right. like you and less about fashion so and i don't like i kind of figured that that was just a thing that teens would do forever <laughs> yeah no i think it's definitely more so 
everyone is so versatile in what they're wearing, you couldn't really define a group of friends or one person by the outfit they wear on a certain day and assume that is how they always dress or that is all the clothing they mm-hmm. own. Because I know there have definitely been weeks where I've started the week wearing no makeup and my hair is not freshly washed and I've been wearing like a baggy sweatshirt and leggings. And then at the end of the week, I'm wearing a dress and nice hair and makeup and everything is put together. Mm-hmm. And you would like probably wouldn't even know it was the same person, honestly. <laughs> but like, I wouldn't be judged for how I'm wearing my clothes one day and assume that's how I always wear clothes. It makes sense. You mentioned this day, and I have this question for you, Riley. Is goth still a thing? Um, I think so. I think it always kind of will be. Not necessarily as much. Like maybe not as people like they're goth and they go all out. Like they're wearing like everything in this one sense like everything's black or i i don't even know like what it would have been like i'm just thinking stereotypical goth on tv it was i mean it was it was like all black um because mom says i did goth for a while i really didn't i just liked black i Mm -hmm. just wore a lot of black but like i didn't go in for i mean the black lipstick or the black nails um you may have dyed your hair black or blue or purple or Mm -hmm. like a dark shade if you were really into that kind of look i did i mean i didn't do any of that um but that kind of thing and then like I don't know. Sometimes it could veer into like, I'm thinking of like the big black dresses, like they used to have at hot topics and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And like some of like the weird lace and kind of stuff. Yeah. You could veer in that direction with goth if you wanted to, but, or you could do like the chains and like the trench coats. And sometimes there were spikes involved in Mm -hmm. various pieces of clothing. You could go that direction too. Generally something that looked kind of intimidating Mm -hmm. and maybe a little angry. Yeah, we we had like industrial goth in the '90s. That was yeah. That was a, I think a very. But I mean, and that's you know like there. There's a. This is an aside. There's a there's a goth YouTuber called Black Friday that I follow, and she breaks down goth fashion in a way that's just like ah, oh, there are so many kinds. It's super cool. Yeah, but it's like, diverse. Yeah, and I can only imagine like, and I mean, I think that that maybe, I don't know. The the fashion in that is such a part of it, and it's maybe. Whereas like with punk, you want to look like you just rolled out of bed and you're like perfectly patched vest and you're like, you know, like <laughs> perfectly fit, but also super old skinny jeans. Like there's a bit of a lie to it. Like, no, what? I don't know. I've been wearing this for five days. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you're yeah. allowed to try sometimes when you're a goth, I guess. I think yeah. so. I, I always felt like those looks could be very put together. Not always. Then I'd but... say the modern goth, quote unquote, if you mm-hmm. will, is more of that era of punk kind of like wearing something edgy but also not trying hard about it like mm-hmm. you just rolled out of bed like you're wearing something that normally wouldn't be like the most popular thing to wear like either like all dark colors or like something with like i don't know like patches on it that you've put there or spikes yeah. or black or something like that that's edgy and kind of intimidating but not going all out and trying super hard for it so mm. basically alternative has become the mainstream yeah and don't we, want to look like you try too hard. <laughs> we we have commodified individuality. Is that what we're saying? Yes. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I think I think societies become great. I think that's what we're saying. <laughs> I don't oh, know. No. That, what what'll be interesting to see is what's the next what is the next phase of the alterna kid then? Yeah. How do um, they rebel against rebellion? I was gonna say now everyone starts wearing suits or and polos and khakis I was, I was about to say like suits and ties yeah and, like, we're going back to like i don't know some weird like donna reed style of dressing or something <laughs> or, or is this is this how we get the advent of the every, every futuristic society always has like the standard silver bodysuit that everybody wears and hey. everyone wonders like what happens to fashion that eventually we're all just like you know what guys just standard silver bodysuit everybody <laughs> what happened we're in the future <laughs> is, are we le- are we leading up to that like the next generation needs to rebel against individuality, and then we're in the future. Silver bodysuit, shoulder shoulder pads. I shoulder feel like they pads. always had shoulder pads, like yeah. foam sh- foam shoulder pads, and hair like in like a Bride of Frankenstein esque kind of like, like sticking up. Yeah. Lots of hairspray, yeah. and then or like a really like, tight bob, and like yeah. glasses, like sunglasses yeah. that or like goggles. Are, are crazy shapes. <laughs> yeah, that like are like a lightning bolt going across your face, except for its glasses. Uh huh. That's the next step. Yeah. 
we we so that's the the next style, Riley. You just gotta capitalize on that future utilitarian chic. School on Monday, I'm gonna wear my silver <laughs> jumpsuit. I know. Hey, the dystopian future novel thing fits right into this. It's now. That's true. We're leading up to <laughs> it. Is we are in the dystopian future. Alternative is the mainstream. Welcome. Welcome. Here is your silver bodysuit and your shoulder pads. <laughs> <laughs> Assimilate, please. <laughs> Well, th- well, thank you, sisters. This has been enlightening and yeah. informative. And we formed our new band, Alternicates. 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 TM. That's a good TM. one. TM. If you want that, you can you can email us and ask for permission to use it <laughs> at still buffering <laughs> at maximumfun.org. Wow, look at that lead in. <laughs> hey, you like that one? Uh, you can also tweet at us at still buff. You can join our Facebook group, still buffering on Facebook. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that is where that is. And uh, go check out MaximumFun.org, which is our parent network of podcasts, uh, which is an amazing collection of shows that I am sure you will enjoy. So yeah. MaximumFun.org. Check it out. And thank you to the novellas for our theme song, Baby Change Your Mind. This has been Still Buffering, a sister's guide to teens through the ages. I am Riley Smurl. I'm Sydney McElroy. And I'm Taylor Smurl. I am a teenager. And, and I, I was, was too. too. We, we just can't do that right because we're such <laughs> rebels and individuals. It's just never going to be. Hi, everybody. I'm Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. And we host the first podcast ever made, My Brother, My Brother, and Me. Every Monday, we put out the first ever advice comedy podcast ever. They found our podcast on Dead Sea Scrolls. We're the Hammurabi Code of podcasts, and we're ready to entertain you with jokes that we invented, the first jokes. So join us every Monday on MaximumFun.org. You'll never crack our code, Dan Brown. Just try me. It's history in the making. And in the fake. And it's all yours for the taking. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.